Thank you, Honorable Minister of Health, Director General, NCDC. Uh, <coughs> Chair, Honorable Ministers, uh, colleagues, gentlemen, <coughs> and ladies of the press. So, today we'll pick up uh, for a few minutes on a concept that we, had, we have described up till now as social distancing. But I would actually like to introduce a new term that probably better defines what we're trying to do and move from the term social distancing to physical distancing. Because what we're, not suge what we're suggesting is not for you to be socially apart from each other. We're suggesting that we stay physically apart but you use technology and any other means available to you to actually increase your social relationships because it's by increasing it through other means that we can maintain our mental well-being, our relationships, and as well achieve our goals uh, of keeping the virus apart from us. We have a peculiar challenge in Nigeria. Everybody knows that we have a population of 200 million, but what people don't quite know is that we have one of the highest population densities on, in the world, and especially in Africa. Just four countries have a higher population density than us. Two of them are island states. Then there's Rwanda and Burundi. After that, we have the highest population density, which means we have the most people living in the same geographical space than most other countries in the continent. This has a different for us and the transmission of viruses than just the number because if it was just the number it wouldn't matter that much if we lived apart enough but we have a very high population density it is this closeness to each other that really enables the virus transmit from one to the other and makes it easier so we have an opportunity to try and increase this and maintain this physical distancing and it is not easy. It's not easy for me. It's not easy for any of the members of this committee. And I can bet it's not easy for any Nigerian because we are a socially intense people. We live on social interactions. We are known across the world for our music, our dance, our drama. We hold our religious gatherings very dear to our heart. And there's no weekend more important for Christianity than this weekend. There's no weekend that Christians are called upon to come together more than this weekend. So there's no weekend this will be hardest for us, the Christians among the Nigerian population, than this weekend. So I really call on all of, all of us, Nigerians, Christians, Muslims, and whatever other religion that you have, to remember we need to pay a short-term price for a long-term goal. And physical distancing is probably the most important tool. So whether we talk about wearing of masks, whether we talk about interruption of mass gatherings, whether we talk about any of the other interventions that we have suggested, this, we are trying to achieve the same thing, thing, to limit the distance that we have from each other between our, ourselves to about two meters. Because from everything we understand about the virus today, it's not the opportunity of transmitting from one individual to the other is made a lot more di difficult if we have sufficient uh, distance between us. And we have also learned that from this virus that there are people that carry this virus without presenting symptoms. But critically, the most important thing is that people can be infectious two days before the, the uh, symptoms appear. We call it the pre-symptomatic phase. So while everybody has been talking about the asymptomatic, the most important is the pre-symptomatic. So people that have become infected will become symptomatic, but don't know yet because they are in a few days between, before that has happened. And that is why we have to increase this distance between us. And like the chair said, even when we announce any decision on mass, the masks are not going to solve the problem. So there have been some messages around the country seeming to imply that wearing a mask makes all the other measures no longer necessary. This is simply not the case. 
It is simply not we understand with the best evidence in front of us. If we do offer an advisory around mass, it will be in addition to everything else. It will not be in place of it. So we have to understand the reasons for these measures. Now, there's something called the Google Mobility Report. It's actually available online to most people. So if you search for the Google Mobility Report set for Nigeria, it tells you the level of intensity of contact between individuals in different locations in Nigeria. So that report is a little bit delayed, but the last one from the 29th of March showed that mobility trends in leisure centers, supermarkets, transport hubs, and places of employment in Nigeria has reduced by about 27%. That is very good, but it's not enough. We have to push that proportion even further down. So I'm hoping that as data becomes available for the next, uh, over the next few days, we will see a further reduction because our future really depends on this. Now, we understand and we know that the closures of markets particularly really is hurting many parts of our country. Many people live from day to day and require that trade in markets in order to survive. There's no doubt about this. Nigerians are really suffering from these measures. But in order to restart that economic activity, we need to get over this hurdle. If we pretend that we don't have this hurdle and push uh, to restart economic activity, the, the, the obstacle will become even bigger because the infection will grow, transmission will grow, and the outbreak will increase. So to achieve that, our religious leaders, our state governors, our community leaders really have a role to play. The PTF can only do so much in communicating the importance of this. But the leaders, those that we hold dear, really need to take this message from this stage and from all our other publications and run with it. Intra translate this to your local languages, interpret this to the lingua you know, let people hear from you. We need the people of Nigeria to hear from their leaders. And the leaders are not only those of us on this side of this room, they are the leaders across the country, from Sokoto to Akwaibo, from Kwara to Ogoja, we need to hear the voices of our leaders. It is through this community uh, combined efforts that we can emphasize the pain of physical distancing, but also the gain that we will see. And it's in taking this responsibility, not only at the individual level, but at the community leadership level, that we can achieve the physical distancing uh, that we need. Today is Good Friday. There's no day that emphasizes the importance of sacrifice for a longer term benefit than Good Friday. So as I join all of you today in remembering the importance of this day, I join you in doing so with a distance of two meters apart from each of you. I hope you will do the same. Thank you.